Hey guys, so I have another 3D character modeling video because the last video I actually never showed you my process in terms of how I go ahead and make a 3D character model in Blender. So I figured I'd come out with another time lapse uh, clip just so that you can see how I would approach it. So you can see here that when I'm making a 3D model, I really count on the concept art. And ideally you have at least three angles, front, side, and back. That way you can make a, you can almost visualize a proper model in your head and then work from there. But you can see as I'm going through it, I'm really referring back to the concept art so that everything almost, it's almost like tracing or sculpting using an image as your blueprint. And actually the way I approach it and the simplest way I find is that you start with a simple shape like a square, a cylinder, a sphere. And then you work from there by extruding, changing the vertex, changing the planes, changing angles and everything like that. So that you have a starting point. And typically I start around the core of the, of the body, like the, the center of mass, and I work from there. And you can see that I'm doing a lot of edge shifts so that you can round out the shape a little bit more from being a cube. Actually, a good tip is that you can really cut your time in half by using the mirror modifier effect because that means, as, as you can see, that means you're only really sculpting one side of your character because the mirror modifier will duplicate it on the other side. Now obviously you would disable the mirror modifier whenever you're modeling a part of your character that's asymmetrical, like for example the, the head and the hair that you'll see in a few seconds, but really for the most of the body, the mirror modifier is a blessing because it honestly does cut your time in half. So here you see that I finished with the actual body of the character and then I moved on to the head. I made it as a separate shape um, using the sphere as a base because I wanted to keep it separate from the body before I attached it later on. And that way I, I was also able to cut out a portion of the head, extrude it out, and then modify it, change the vertexes and change everything to make, give them a bit of a little bit of anime hair. It's a low poly model which is why you see it kind of being very geometric. What you saw there was, um, I noticed that my, I extruded, I think I extruded multiple times in the same area, making multiple different planes. So I actually had to go back in, highlight the planes and the faces that weren't in use and were unnecessary and cut them out. And now you actually see me making some of his accessories, like the little flask, his uh, little pouch on his belt, um, and things like that, which was a lot of fun. And basically all of those shapes, they really come out of just simple 3D shapes, like, the flask was just a cylinder, and the pouch was just a cube. And then the belt buckle here was just a combination of two different shapes. Yeah, it was a lot simpler than you think. And now here the f here's actually the really fun part, was when I actually started making the sword. Again, it's really just taking a basic shape and then modeling it. Um, going going from that basic rectangle shape and then adding, extruding, and modeling it from there. So if you've ever done vase shaping, if that's what it's called, it's very similar. It's a very similar process. You're really, you're really just kind of molding things as you go along. Now the belt around his chest, that was a little tougher. I had a bit of a harder time making that because like most clothes, it doesn't bend as naturally as some other things. And then, uh, yeah, then you just put it all together, control J it, and you have a very simple character model. Add a little bit of lighting effects and uh, boom, you're good to go. That's basically how I would approach making a simple character model. Again, my biggest tips would be use the mirror modifier as a way of cutting down your uh, modeling time, especially if you know your character is going to be symmetrical. Always refer back to your concept art and make sure that you set the, the 2D concept art on the right plane so that you're always referring back to it. And uh, yeah, once you've done all that, you're pretty much good to go. So the next part in this kind of, I guess, video series is you're going to see how I would rig this guy for actual proper animation and then we'll go into a little bit of weight modeling or sorry weight painting and then uh, maybe actually go through an actual animation with you so stay tuned for that I hope you guys liked the video let me know what you think down below and uh, have a good night talk to you later